Hello and welcome to an Not So Awesome Review. Today we're looking at the Power Rangers Legacy Collection Power Morphicon exclusive Lord Draken action figure by Bandai. And if you guys don't know who this is, he is a character who premiered in issue 9 of the Boom Studios Power Rangers comic book and is the main villain of the Shattered Grid storyline that's going on right now. That's actually ending uh, today. If you're watching this Wednesday, August, whatever day this went up, it's actually the day that the last issue of that story comes out. So I'm really excited about that. I'm filming this the night before, in case you're wondering. And yeah, so this is basically a version of Tommy that although Jason broke the spell and broke the Sword of Darkness and everything, uh, he decided to stay with Rita. He decided he still wanted to be evil. And the story goes from there where he hijacks basically the White Ranger power from... I want a uh, spoiler alert, I guess. He hijacks the White Ranger power from Jason while he's trying to get it into himself. And this combination is born. And uh, yeah, funny enough. Again, spoiler alert. Just putting that out there for the comic book. Uh, this isn't even how he looks like in the comic anymore. He only had this form for his like first story arc and then for Shattered Grid, he only stayed like this for a very little bit of time because he's been getting more powers and his costume is actually com not completely different but very different from this look. Though this being his original look, it is really awesome and it is really cool to see this in figure form. And I, I will say it's a nice send off for Bandai to make this figure since they're basically done. They didn't announce anything new, everything else is basically already come out or was already announced specifically talking about the white um dino dino ranger dino thunder ranger yeah the white dino thunder ranger the two psycho rangers and the yellow dino thunder ranger who i don't know if she's actually been out but i know she was announced like way before he was she is coming out uh we are getting re-releases of every figure in the line which is awesome so if you want Big Bad Toy Store, I know has them on pre-order. GameStop has them on pre-order. I would go with GameStop just because you can go to your local store and get it there. It, probably just a lot easier. In my opinion, if you guys don't like GameStop, well, then I don't do it there. But, I mean, at least you can pay off slowly. It's what I'm going to do. Just putting it out there. And they have the exclusive yellow and pink wit weapons, metallic colors. If you guys want those, they're going to have those as their exclusive. I don't think Yellow Dino Thunder is going to be their exclusive, but I wouldn't be surprised. Because it looks like all female rangers are going to them now because of how poorly they did in the stores. But anyways, we're talking about this guy. No more distractions. Let's just get into the review. And I really like him, though I do have some minor issues. One with the paint, which isn't a big deal. It's not going to really affect you guys. I highly doubt it's a widespread issue. I haven't seen anyone else with it. And the other one is a pretty... I wouldn't say widespread issue, but from what I've seen, it is affecting multiple people, which sucks. But uh, detail-wise... I will say this, he looks amazing. He does have a really nice gold going on all around, you know, the uh, head, the helmet, the vest thing, the arm pieces, the little gloves, the boots. The gold on it is really nice. I, Albeit, it is a little bit, I wouldn't say orangey. I don't know, it, it's gold. Let me put it that way. You remember Gold Ranger? He was in gold. This is gold. It looks awesome. I'm okay with it. And I actually really love how the helmet looks. He has black on the helmet that came out really good. All the line work on there. The red visor and the red little eyes with the tiger thing. And the little gem on the head look amazing. He has little things kind of where the mouthpiece is. The green is a nice metallic green that looks amazing. The symbol on his chest looks really good. All the way through, the paint is really good. The white on him is glossy as opposed to the White Ranger who is more of a matted color. And I actually like this a lot more. I mean, don't get me wrong. The matted color, I think, works with the White Ranger. But this, the shininess, it's really shiny. I'm going to put that out right now. I don't know if you can see the light reflecting off of his chest and everything. Uh, the chest piece and these upper leg pieces being a little bit more shiny than the actual legs and arm. It's it's kind of crazy. But I don't know. It looks good. I love it. I, I really do like how like shiny it is. It helps... I don't know, it's like aesthetically, I think it's really nice. He does come with two accessories. He comes with Saba, which is kind of funny because he doesn't actually use Saba at all. Saba doesn't like him. If you guys read the comic books, you would know that. But I'm just putting it out there. He doesn't really use Saba. He came with him. Um, but Saba and him ain't friends. He does have the Dragon Dagger, which is pretty cool. And um, yeah, the belt looks good. The symbol on the belt, you can see. I focus that in it looks really good they did paint the red and the black the little lightning things and you can kind of see the dragon symbol in there 
a little bit. Not not too well, but it's there. Again, the dragon symbol on his chest looks really good. My gripe with the paint is just right here. It looks like a little bit of gold dropped onto the green there. And it's just annoying me. Again, that's my figure. I highly doubt that happened to a good number of them. So paint-wise, it looks really good. The weapons are painted really nice. They're painted definitely different from the originals. The silver is just a little bit, a little bit, actually, no, I want to say the silver is the same. The gold is definitely different, and I will compare them in a minute here. But, yeah, they are painted slightly nicer with the gold and everything, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the actual figure itself, and articulation, you know, it's pretty much what you would expect from a legacy figure, except for, uh, he's got a, yeah, he's got a super, super loose upper or um ab joint i guess i don't know whatever you want to call it yeah it's it's not good it's not good at all it, it really sucks um yeah if i can do that that's that's not fun his legs a little bit but not too much he's standable which is good but yeah i don't know maybe it's the fact that they decided to print more of these that issues like this slip through because originally they I wouldn't say they had a small number of these figures planned, but they they did have like a number of them planned and then they found out, okay, we can get more of them, which is why if you bought yours at the convention without buying it uh, beforehand, and why after a certain date actually, even on the Power Morphicon website, the price went up to 50, um, it's because they printed more of them, but they needed to raise the price they were charging people so they could offset the cost of that. So. Yeah, maybe that's why. I don't know. Um, yeah, you would have to compare to people, and it would just be impossible to find out if, like, this is the second run of it, if all of them are the same, if the first run of them are okay, or if they printed them all at the same time and it doesn't really matter. I don't know, but yeah, it's apparently an issue that's going around, and it's disappointing, but aside from that, it's a pretty good figure. I mean, it's, again, what you would expect from the Legacy line, and since it's basically over... Can't complain too much, but yeah, his head can't look up too much because the back of his collar here kind of gets in the way. He can look down a good amount. He can look left and right. No pivot or anything still. Again, can't really complain because, well, the line's over, but hopefully Hasbro will fix that. His arm can go up that high. He can rotate forward that much and rotate back that much. I mean, you can kind of get it all the way around if you, you know, move his arm like that. But obviously, again, the vest does get in the way. He does have the upper arm rotation here that's... Not wanting to move, but yeah, there it goes. He does have the double jointed elbows that do better than 90, which is really good. Rotation at the wrist along with that pivot right there. It's a ball peg wrist. I don't know. It's it's good. It works. Again, you can lean back that much, lean forward that much, rotate at the waist, you can kick forward if it stays up. Well, I mean, you, you can see how much you can kick forward. Okay, there we go. Not that much. Can't really kick back at all. Let can go out a very good amount. Upper thigh rotation. Double jointed knees that do better than 90. Uh, no boot rotation. He can move his leg up just a little bit. Back a little bit more. And he does have an ankle pivot. So posing him isn't too much of a challenge. I'm just going to leave that out there. Uh, you can get him into some decent poses. But getting him to basically stay in those poses is the more difficult part of this. It's not impossible obviously his legs aren't super loose which is a good thing though mine are a little bit it's mostly just that ab joint and again although it's annoying you can get it to stay and i did have them standing in one pose basically since i took him out of the box about a week and a half ago up until today he was standing in the same exact pose that you saw him at the beginning of this video for that long without falling over so it is possible to get him standing which is fine um not a big issue there. It's a cool looking figure. Uh, again, I, I'm annoyed about the ab crunch, but it's passable. It's not It's not deal breaking, surprisingly. It's, it's annoying. You have to work around it a little bit, but it's not as horrible as it sounds. Though, for the price point and everything, again, I know they printed them in limited numbers and they were trying to appease everybody, which is good. You know, bravo on them for doing that. I do wish they were able to kind of avoid that issue, but stuff happens. I mean, the company is not doing Power Rangers anymore, so 
I'm happy we even got the figure. Anyways, let's move on to some size comparisons. So for your basic action figure comparison, here he is next to a Dragon Stars Goku and Marvel Legends Spider-Man and an SH figure art Goku. You can see he towers over all of them. So... Yeah, probably too big for every single line here. And here he is compared to the Entertainment Earth exclusive Psycho Silver Ranger and the Metallic Red Ranger here, who is standing a little bit wobbly. I've, his leg is just a little bit off. I probably need to fix that. We you know some heat, cold water and everything. But uh, yeah, you know, he's about the same height, I would say, as both of them if he wasn't wobbling. But definitely taller because of the little fin thing on his helmet. And just for the heck of it, here he is compared to every other Tommy Oliver action figure we have. And I'm just really disappointed that we didn't get a Turbo. That would have been awesome to not just gotten the entire Turbo team, but at the very least have gotten Turbo Red Ranger. So we could have had every iteration in this series of Tommy Oliver. Because that would have been awesome. It just, it would have. It would have. I mean, we have Black Dino Thunder, White Ranger, Green Ranger, and Zeo Ranger Red. And it, it just, it would have been so awesome to include the Turbo Red Ranger, albeit he was only in it for like, actually he was there for, was he there for a good amount of time? I don't know. I think the switch actually happened pretty fast. I don't remember. I don't think it was even half a season, to be honest. But either way, would have been awesome. Hopefully with the new lightning, uh, lightning line, which I mentioned in my review from Monday, it's st still not a good name. Uh, hopefully there we'll get a turbo ranger we'll get all of these figures i'm sure uh we've already seen the prototype for white which uh, i saw people complaining about the ab crunch that he has uh two things i can think of one it's a prototype so it's probably not gonna look that bad and if it does it still looks like it has a good amount of range second maybe he'll have a, a upper chest ball peg and move side to side i highly doubt that's gonna be the case because i don't think they'll do that with the uh other figures since they don't have armor but that would be awesome because i do like my upper chest pivots on figures because it it helps it helps posing them it's it's good but like i said if you missed out on this line if you want to collect them go for it but i wouldn't be surprised if hasbro puts out all these figures including lord draken and including lord draken in all his iterations uh hopefully they do a great job hopefully they add ankle pivots to that prototype which again it's prototype so at the moment not too worried we'll see how it goes come april I would say by to uh, Toy Fair next year, um, we'll probably get a good shot of the new wave of the Lightning series. So hopefully, you know, we'll be getting a good amount of figures for that first wave, good amount of accessories like they promised, and hopefully a very good articulated figure. I said hopefully way too many times. But yeah, it is cool seeing these guys all together nonetheless. Though, again, I, I wish, I really wish we had Turbo. So overall, it is a excellent figure. Yes, the ab crunch is annoying, but it's workable. It's not deal breaking. You can still get him into the poses that you want to get him into. It is annoying, especially at first, but it's workable. It's not as bad as it sounds or seems. So don't let that be a negative on getting the figure. Again, I don't know how widespread that issue is, but I know other people have gotten it, so I do feel like I have to mention it to you guys that it is possible that when you open yours and take it out, assuming you decide to, he may have a very loose ab joint. The legs, if you get one with a loose leg, don't blame this manufacturing thing, just blame Bandai in general because a lot of the Power Ranger figures have loose legs. It, it's just kind of a theme that went through this entire legacy line. And, you know, maybe I'll do a retrospective of it at some point pretty soon. We'll see. I kind of kind of want to do something like that, but until then... It is a good figure. I do recommend it. Definitely look into it. If you guys can get it for roughly, let's say, 100 to 110, 20 is pushing it. The reason I'm saying this is because if you didn't go to the convention, obviously you couldn't get it. You could have, you could have, and I'm putting this out there, have ordered it from the website, paid the $70 for a non-intending badge, and it's 70, it's 70 dollars because you're paying the $20 for the badge, and I think it's. 50 for the figure and if you wanted to add anything on like the throne which uh the throne would have been so awesome it was like made of resin it was hand painted it looked amazing didn't get it wish i did but like back to the point of paying about 100 ish 10 to 20 dollars you gotta look at it from this standpoint say you're like me and you live in southern california uh add in gas depending on how far you are 10 20 30 on gas uh 50 for the figure that's 80 
another 24 to ticket if you went Sunday. I'm just saying only Sunday. So that's what is that? Uh, a hundred right there. Fifteen dollars for the parking. Hundred and fifteen. So that's my best way to justify it to you guys that yeah, okay, you're not getting all the fun of being there in person or if you were there in person, but it's not too bad if you look at it that way. Just my opinion on that matter. And a quick look at the weapons, because I did say I was going to compare them. Yeah, the gold, they're, they're the same mold and everything, just the gold is more vibrant on that. The green, I think, is about the same. And for the two Sabas here, again, same mold. Uh, the older one has this weird... Here, let me focus this in, actually. The older one has these, uh, like, groovy details right here on the blade part that the newer one doesn't. But they're the same mold. Both of them painted in a type of gold. I don't know which gold I like more. I like how vibrant and bright this one is. This one's darker and grittier. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe this one. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like this one works too. But, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. So, if you have one, you have both of them. Just have them painted differently. Anyways, that is my review for the Power Rangers Power Morphicon Lord Draken Legacy Collection Action Figure. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, comment down below, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all later. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.